Great, thank you, Chris. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining our webinar this afternoon. Now, as Chris uh, said in his introduction, uh, pasture dieback is a condition which is killing summer growing grass pastures. Over the last, last three years or so, it's spread across most of Queensland's prime breed country and can be found as far north as the Atherton Tablelands, uh, south to New South Wales, where it was reported earlier this year. Pasture dieback has a significant impact on pasture productivity. This picture was taken at the end of March. You can see on the side of the hill, pasture starting to be affected, but there's still plenty of grass. This photo was taken six weeks later from the same area, and you can see the grass is pretty much all died, leaving only broadleaf weeds. So going through the progression of symptoms of pasture dieback, the, firstly, it's only been reported on summer growing or tropical, tropical pastures. Uh, there has been one report of it affecting a, a ryegrass, but, but it's all, that hasn't, uh, that's only been a single, single incidence. You will notice that, uh, that the leaves are yellow, they turn red to purple. Most species show the reddening and the purpling of the leaves. Uh, there's a couple of species which will only show the yellowing, uh, for example, the gatton and green panics, and also rose grasses. But the majority of them will show that reddening or purpling as well. Symptoms typically start on the oldest leaves of tillers first. They start at the tip of the, of the leaf blade, move along the leaf blade to the ligule. Typically starts as single plants or small patches. These grow, merge and combine and getting larger. The center of the patch dies, the grasses die, leaving symptomatic plants around the perimeter. The patches can grow to cover entire slopes or paddocks. And in some cases, there's also been reports of all or the majority of properties being affected. Now, Darbike appears to be able to spread up, down and across slopes, and it's not specific to any particular soil type. The symptomatic plants are probably best described as being unthrifty. They tend to be smaller, they're less productive, and they have fewer seed heads. The reduced root system um, is also typical of, of a symptomatic plant, um, and it has fewer fibrous roots when it's dug up as you can see on the, the slide. Once the grass has died, uh, broadleaf weeds or broadleaf species tend to invade, um, predominantly broadleaf, um, broadleaf weeds. But in addition to that, if there's a background of legumes, you might see more legumes coming through. The broadleaf species are not affected by pasture dieback, which is why they're colonizing those areas. When it comes to trying to work out whether you have dieback on your farm, it's really important to work through all the other possible causes of pasture death and eliminate those before assuming pasture dieback. The reddening and purpling of, of the leaves are symptomatic of a stressed plant and um, also some nutrient deficiencies. So it's important to work, work through all the other cases that it could be that's killing your pasture. So moisture stress, nutrient deficiency, hard pans, water logging, herbicide, Work through all those, and then if you come to nothing, then consider a pasture dieback. So what's causing pasture dieback? To date, no causal agent has been confirmed. While a range of things have been isolated and identified, no single organism has consistently been able to reproduce the symptoms and kill the plants suggesting that it's more, more than a single agent, but a, rather a complex, of multiple organisms or factors involved. Now there are two insects which are, which are under investigation, the white ground pearl, and the second one is a pasture mealybug. Both of these insects live in the soil, the mealybug coming to the surface uh, following uh, rainfall during the warmer, time, warmer months of the year. Now both of these insects are capable of damaging pastures in their own right, 
So work is continuing to understand their, their potential role in pasture dieback and, and the interaction that they may have with, our, with other organisms to actually try and understand better what, this, what the complex condition is made up and how these, all these different factors might be interacting. Identifying the causal agent is certainly a priority for research so that solutions can be developed. If you'd like further information on dieback, uh, please visit the New South Wales DPI website, um, search for pasture dieback. There's a range of resources there, uh, in addition to links to resources provided by other organisations. New South Wales DPI are very interested in finding out where dieback is, so we get an idea of its distribution and the rate at which it's spreading. So if you think you have dieback, please call the, uh, the hotline, the 1800 number shown on the screen, or you can send us an email with a clear photo to the biosecurity email address, which is also on the screen. Thank you.